Hey everybody, I wanted to do a little how-to video on spinning from, uh, this one's kind of extra fluffy looking, an art bat, because I make a lot of these mini art bats, and they're a good way, I use them just as a tool for uh, blending different colored fibers together. This one is actually, it's 100% Coradel, so it's all the same type of wool, but you can see it's a bunch of different colors all blended together, and sometimes there's sparkles and sometimes there's not. This one does not have any sparkles. I'm trying to get the camera to stay where it should. So anyhow, usually I think the other spinning method I'd showed was this is a uh, roving. It's been dyed, so it's in more like strips like this. They look kind of like ribbons, and then you kind of, it's basically attaching like one end of the ribbon to the next to the next, and then that spins on. This, it's the same idea, but it's a little bit different. You would get this kind of fluffy, this is how I do it anyway, art bat, it's more what I would do is you break it down into like smaller sections. You can see I've already got some started over here. And uh, hold on, let me bear with me. I'm trying to get the camera and my wheel and everything where it's supposed to be so you can see and I can spin at the same time. So let me get this caught back up in here. And um, so this is a different, it's not merino, like I said, it's Coradel, so it's a little bit. Uh, I like Cordell a lot. It's got longer, fi it's got long fibers, and uh, it's a little catchier, I guess, um, woolier, if you will, <laughs> than the merino, which is really like a cotton ball almost. But um, with this, you don't want to get too much twist in it, and like I said, it's not so much a fiber thing. Like I said, this one's just Cordell. But you see, hold on, I started doing this without even telling you. I ripped it into a piece, and then I just kind of grabbed like a corner over here, and then attach you know, your corner to this, and then you get the spin going, so then it's connected, and I kind of, you know, you can work down this way, and then if you want to, you know, you can either let it kind of naturally change colors, like that, or you can purposely, you know, if you're kind of on that part, and you're like, I think I want, you know, this other part, you can kind of change, like I said, I have no clue if this is official, that's what I do, kind of change sections, and you get, like I said, I like this nice marbleized effect, which I feel like the art bats lend itself very well to, where, like I said, even though this is single ply, you can see you've got almost a striping variation going on in it, almost like if you two-plied two different colors together, but it's in a single ply. So uh, I call it, like, marble yarn. I think that's what it's officially called. But, like I said, as you see, I'm doing sort of a woolen, you know, I'm just getting it going, and then I'm just sort of pulling back. You could, if you wanted to do more of a worsted spin, which is more similar to what you had been doing on the other one. Um, I'm going to do a different color just so you can see. And that's more where you're like pulling forward. So you would do the same thing you would do on the merino strips of you kind of pull forward and smooth back. Pull forward, smooth back. But um, one thing, especially with singles, is you don't want to get too much twist in the singles because... Like, when you're doing doubles, like, the two different strands, you know, you kind of take some of that twist out when you're two-plying it together. If you're just doing singles, then, you know, your final product is just the single thread. So you don't want it to be, like, all angry at itself and uh, end up in a giant mess. If you don't, uh, you know, I wet mine on a nitty knotty and then um, let it dry. And the stretch really takes, you know, relaxes it a lot, and that way it can be e more easily dealt with. Even though there will be a little bit of, you know, curl to it. But it shouldn't be, like, snarly. But um, you really want to be mindful if you're spinning singles for the sake of singles. See, and this is, like I said, a Spinolution King Bee wheel. You don't want to, and I'm bad about really getting my feet going, too. You know, you start focusing on something or you're trying to do it fast. Really slow down, and you see my feet aren't treadling very fast. But you don't want to get, I mean, you can see I can stop this. And, I mean, it does, you know, it does that. It is springy, and you can kind of see, you know, the spring in it, but it's not like a crazy, you know, it's not like, I mean, it does get a little twisty, but it's not like a super snarled mess. So you kind of, and you can feel it. I mean, that's one thing about spinning. You can pretty much do it with your eyes shut once you know what you're doing is I can feel this, and excuse the fact that I have Sharpie marker on my finger, just addressed something, um... And you can feel that there's, you know, it's stuck together, but, I mean, it's still malleable. It's not like if you kept twisting, kept twisting, kept, you can feel the twist 
get too twisty in there almost. So that's really the, the trick is you want it to be twisty enough that, you know, it's staying the size you want it to stay and the fibers are all staying together. But if you do your feet too fast, you'll get into, and then you're not letting it go in, you know, quick enough or whatever, you will end up with a bunch of twist in here and that'll really drive you crazy. So that's one of my best advice for doing uh, singles, whether or not you're doing them from like an art bat or if you're doing the like, you know, merino roving strips is, uh, you know, don't let your feet get going too fast. Let it spin till you can feel that twist. Like I said, hopefully you can see it. You, I'm feeling it with these fingers of when the twist gets in there and I'm kind of like, okay, yeah, that's good. And then you move on to the next little bit. And you can also feel not just the amount of twist, but the size that it is. So like I know, and I spin a lot this size, this is kind of my worsted size. I know this is the size, what it feels like. And so then when it gets to that consistency, I let it go in. So you can see I'm doing, even though this is more of a woolen style preparation with it being an art bat, you can still do more of a worsted style. And this is where you can tell I'm self-taught and just, you know, you can still do the pulling forward with it, even though I do kind of prefer on from art bats, I like pulling it back. And that's where you kind of hold it here and then you pull the fibers back then bring your fingers back and then feed it in and then pull it back feel the fibers and then let it go in so I mean that's a totally different animal I just prefer doing that with the art bats I just think it's more fun that way but you can achieve the same result with singles with doing like a more of a worsted but if you're doing worsted honestly you can see I really slowed my feet down even more if you're doing it that way so yeah, if you're doing worsted, you know, the front ply method like that uh, with singles, I would really slow my feet down because you're kind of holding on to it a little bit longer. So you could end up with a lot of twist in there. So anyhow, that's my uh, little blurp on spinning from an art bat. So it's not as scary as it looks. Basically, you just always pick a corner and then you go from there and then like I said if you want to switch colors you can always you know you can break it and do it that way you could also here this is the big one again if you wanted you could kind of pull down in like a long strip and if that makes you more comfortable you can also do it that way I really like I said I like spinning from art bats and I like spinning more woolen so you know I'll do like the whole big thing and just spin through it but um if you like the strip method more, you can really pull it down. And it's not going to be as thin, obviously. I mean, this is, you can see, this is still, like, pretty big. But you can pull it down in, like, a long strip. And pull it that way. That way. But the trick is, like I said, especially if you're doing a front draw method, of you know, then that's where you're pushing it forward instead of pulling it back. So if you're pushing it forward this way, I would really slow down my feet. Anyhow, that's enough rambling on that. So I hope that helps, and um, I would love to hear from some weavers. I know there's a store that we've got some of these in North Carolina that they use a lot for weaving, and uh, I think what they're doing, I'm not a weaver, even though I'd like to be, is I believe they're pulling it in, uh, you can kind of make it more into roving by pulling it into strips, and then you can kind of you know, pull it more along that way. And I think that's what they're doing with it. If you are a weaver, I would love to hear. <laughs> but you can definitely make it more of a long, thin thing if you want it to be. Like I said, I always just spin it. So I just spin from the corner of the blob. But uh, yeah, I mean, you can see you can make this like long roving if you wanted it to be. So that's what I like is it's really versatile. So that's my little tips on uh, spinning from an art bat. If you're new and, uh, you know, just don't get too much twist in your yarn. Because, yeah, I mean, you see it's it's got, like, you know, some twist in it, but it's definitely not, like, <laughs> so. Anyhow, hope that helps.